Hey, my name's Ashley, and you already know from the title that my video today is a chat about the basics. I have one friend who was chatting with me about my videos, and she said, could you just talk about simple things having to do with makeup? Not like super complex things or explaining a bunch of different ideas and different products and concepts, but more just like the basics. And she asked me to start specifically talking about brushes. So I thought it was a really fantastic idea. So today I want to talk about how to choose good brushes specifically for an eye look. I'm the kind of person who very strongly believes that you can find good brushes at any price. You don't have to spend an arm and a leg to go out and get brushes. You can find good quality brushes for, you know, not so much. So I have a few that I'll be showing you. I also decided that while I would talk about the brushes that I use, I also wanna do a demonstration of how I use them. So I just ordered the new ColourPop Coast to Coral eyeshadow palette. And you can see that here, it's so beautiful. And I am gonna be using that to show how I incorporate some simple techniques when it comes to eyeshadow and why I use a specific brush for a specific reason. Now I learned a lot of what I'm gonna talk about from three different people. Robert Welsh is one of them. He is a UK based makeup artist and he is incredible. I highly recommend checking out his information. Alexandra Anel is another one. I believe she has her degree in art. Uh, she's not a makeup artist, but her artistry is incredible. She's amazing. And then the last one is Lisa Eldridge. She's also based in the UK and she is a brilliant makeup artist and how to teach different techniques about makeup. So I wanted to highlight the three of them because I do learn a lot from their YouTube channels and their Instagram pages. The first thing I wanted to show is if you have just barely gotten into makeup and you want just a few brushes and you don't know which ones are best. This is specifically for eyeshadow and I'll talk about face brushes and stuff like that another day. I think that in the collection, it's most important to have these four brushes. The first is a buffing or blending brush. This is used, as the name says, to buff and blend out eyeshadow. It helps to take any harsh lines and blend them in really beautifully. I use for a lot of, I use it for a lot of things, but I'm going to show you specifically how I use it to blend out because one thing that you really don't want are obvious harsh lines. You don't want to see how one color and another color are not blended together. Now there's exceptions, you know, a cut crease is an obvious exception to that where you want to see that obvious cutout shape. But in other situations, we don't want harsh lines. So for good grief, I cannot spell today. So for buffing, this one specifically is from Sigma and it is their E38. Look at this, I cannot spell. Their diffused crease brush. Okay, so I really like to have more than one because I do use one to add the color and then I like to have one that's clean if I want to do any additional blending. The next one that I recommend having, oh well let me show you some other examples. This one is from Morphe so it's less expensive. This is the M505 and this is another example of a you can see it's nice and big, a nice big buffing brush. So they have different shapes, 
but the purpose is the same. Okay, so then this next one, this was like the limited edition from Wet n Wild. It is their little Pac-Man brush. But, oh, <laughs> you guys, I never said they were clean. Okay, never not once. Don't judge me. <laughs> anyway, you can see that this one is definitely more condensed. It's shorter and it's more thick. So this one is used for adding color and specifically, like we don't do a blending motion usually with it. I do more of a packing motion with it and a pressing motion. That's the idea. So I'm going to show you that while I'm doing my actual makeup. I like to use it on the top and I also use it on the bottom lash line as well. So I think that this one is very important to have. And I have a few different kinds. Both of these are from Wet n Wild. And then I have this one, which is, ooh, got it, which is from Luna Magic. And then I have this one. This is from Sigma. This is their E54. And yeah, these are just a few examples of some of the packing brushes that I have. So they have a little bit different shape, each of them. But again, the purpose is the same. And I always like to have a smaller brush for the outer area that you know, very outer corner to add dimension and depth and shading. So this is one of the examples that I have. This one is from ColourPop and it is their E21 brush. And then I also have this one from Morphe and it is their M321. And if you are buying um, palettes from like Urban Decay, for example, they have one in their palette and it doesn't have a name, but this is like a dual ended brush that comes inside their palettes. So for me, it's really important to have this to get right in that outer corner. And also you can use it on the lower lash line and also you can use it on the inner corner. So it has a lot of uses. And the last one that I feel like is necessary for an eyeshadow look is this slanted brush. This one is the E6 from ColourPop, but it's just a slanted brush. It's nice and thin, and I use this for the top and bottom lash line. You can use it for either, and I think it's so important to have this. Now, obviously, you can add whatever additional brushes that you want. You can see here, I have a ton. I um, have lots of brushes for lots of different things. I have a little bit of an addiction to a brush, but those are the basic four that I recommend for an eyeshadow look. Okay, so now I am going to use only these four brushes to do my eyeshadow today. For hooded eyes, one of the things, I mean, I have hooded eyes. That's this additional skin that's up here um, that hoods over and makes it so that I really don't have a crease. So I have to recreate my crease. Now, if you have a different shape of eye, you obviously don't have to do that. If you have a very obvious crease, then you know where your crease is. But because mine is covered... I have to recreate where I want it. So I typically do it just a little bit below my brow and I use my buffing brush for that. And then I always tap off the excess every single time. So I always start in the outer corner here and I start to add color and really define where I want my shape to be. So I'm creating kind of an elongated C shape. So the outer corner is the end of the C and then I'll go in closer toward my brow to create a longer area. And once I have the color there, 
then I will use another color to blend out where that shadow was placed. So I'm going in with this lighter shade. I'm gonna be using the exact same brush, the Sigma Buffer, and that is why I always tap off the excess because that can create a lot of fallout. So I go here and I move my hand. I started here, but I move it to the very end of the brush and I do this back and forth windshield wiper motion. And the purpose of that, that's something that I learned from Robert Welsh, is that where you hold the brush is gonna change how the makeup is applied. So when it's higher up on the brush, it adds more pressure and it makes the color more thick. And then the lower down the handle that you go, the more flexible the brush becomes and the softer and less dense the application is. And so that's really good for a blend. So you'll see throughout that my hand will change positioning on the handle of the brush depending on the density and the pressure that I want to use. And we'll just sip through that part. So now you can see that this one color is really dark down here by the outer corner of my eye and then it blends up and kind of ombres out so that there's not a harsh line where that color was placed, but it's just a nice blend. So now I'm gonna change to my packing brush here and this is Oh, I was wrong. No, I thought this was a wet and wild, but this is the e.l.f. eyeshadow C brush. So I'm going to dip into this darker color, tap off the excess, and then I want more color on this outer edge right here. So I'm going to pack it right here, and I'm really not using those windshield wiper back and forth motion, I'm doing more of a packing, tapping motion because I want that color to be more defined and brighter. And I really focus on the outer third of the eye. And then I'm hitting it with this buffing brush to clean up that line. So again, I have more color and it's added more depth but then it does that ombre effect out so there's not really that harsh line that we're looking at. And I want even more dimension in the outer corner. I want more depth. I want it to create an effect so that the eye is going to be drawn to the portion of my eye that has lighter color, which will end up being the inner third of my eye. So I want to create that dimension by putting more darkness on the outer edge. So I'm gonna be using this brush, and this is the Morphe M321. And I'm going in here in the darkest shade in the palette, tapping off that excess, and then hit in that outside corner with just a little additional dark color and dimension. And we'll zip through this part. Then I go back with my buffing brush and again, I get that blend. Now I never go in and blend on the inner portion. It's only on the outer portion because that's the part that I want to look the most blended out. Now the decision is which shimmer I want to use on the inner part. This one here is more of a true gold. This one is gold, but also looks like it has a little pink and orange. And then the center is definitely more pink and red with a little bit of gold flecked in it. So I think I'm going to go with this pinky gold. And for shimmers, I always use my hands. I like to use my fingers. It's just my personal preference. And I'm going to place that on the inner third 
of my eye and pull it out to meet the color that's already there. And after I've added that, again, I go in with this buffer and I wanna make sure that there's not a straight line that's dividing those two shadows. So when you look at my eye, the attention should be on that inner portion that's brighter and has more shimmer. And then the outer portion, it's kind of like a light to dark moment on my eye. Now for the last brush that I recommended, I'm gonna use this slanted brush and I am gonna use it to add a line on the top lash. Now this palette doesn't really have a color that I want, so I'm gonna dip into my Going Coconuts, which is also from ColourPop, and it has that beautiful brown, that deep brown in the corner. And I always wet the brush, and then I'll put that moisture through it, And then I'm dipping in and we're going to draw that line out. And we'll speed up a little bit through this. So you, it just adds again, just a little bit of dimension, a little bit of depth to the eye. And here is the look. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add a little bit of mascara. So you can kind of see, I know it looks weird that half my face isn't touched. Um, I'm gonna do that later off camera because I just wanna show the different brushes that were recommended, just the basic brushes that you need for your collection. And then also the ways that I recommend to use that brush. Now directly from Robert Welsh, does makeup have rules? No, but it has theory has color theory you can honestly do whatever you want with makeup if you want to put one color on your eye do it if you want to do a halo eye with darkness inside and out and bright color in the center do it that's what's the best about makeup is you can play you can experiment and have fun you can do whatever it is that you want so i just wanted to show you the basics to kind of start with the building blocks so that your skills can get even better. So let's throw on some mascara here. And here is the final look. Guys, just simple, easy, fast, and fun. I just want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you want more ideas, more basics, how to find the right foundation, matching colors, I have tons of different ideas. So I'm happy to share those with you. I hope you have an awesome day, you guys. Thanks. Love you. Bye.